High Adventure. Tonight, Ron Evans brings us a nail-biting story entitled The Brink of Eternity. have a quiet night for a change. Oh, so did I. The Luftwaffe's late. Perhaps they're running out of bombs. Or better still, planes. It must happen soon, judging by the numbers our boys are shooting down. Oh, you can't believe all they say. Matron says they have a habit of multiplying everything by five. They have to. It's called morale boosting. Well, all I know is they can't keep on bombing us forever. Oh, I don't feel like going out to that cold shelter. Let's stay here for a change. Well, there's nothing that says we have to go to the air raid shelter. I'll stay here with you, Sue. What about you, Heather? Why not? Let's carry on playing cards as though nothing is happening outside. Your deal, Helen. Mm. It sounds like they're going for the docks tonight. Sometimes I wish we girls could go up in Spitfires and do our bit. Oh, not likely. My feet stay strictly on terra firma. I've heard those poor pilots have a life expectancy of less than a month. That's what I've heard. And those boys on bomb disposal, they only have... Oh, Helen, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... I I forgot about Paul. Oh, it's all right. I'm only too horribly aware of that statistic. Seven weeks. It isn't long, is it? Let's change the subject. Helen, I think you've misdealt the cards. I've got 15 here. And I've only got... I've just had a report of an unexploded bomb at the nurse's home. Will you deal with it? Excuse me, sir. The nurse's home, you say? Can I take it? Oh, didn't you hear me ask, Harris? My fiancé is there, sir. Were there any casualties? No, not according to the police. The bomb went through the roof and is resting on a mound of debris on the ground floor. Oh. I'm told the nurse it all went to the area, shelter. Well, thank heaven for that. Can I take it anyway, sir? I'm sure I don't mind, Paul. Well, all right, I suppose so. I'm warning you, though, it could be tricky. The police say they can't identify the type. Easy on there, Thompson. The fuse is here, sir. Damned awkward. It's going to have to be turned a bit. Uh, can you make out the type? No, it's, it's difficult. Move over, Sergeant. Let me take a look. Well? Oh, that's a new one to me. Uh. I can just make out some letters. Yes, it's uh, A, G, C... Seven five. Uh, I'd say it's a new type, sir. Yes, it could be right. I think I'd better call Major Ellington and see if he has anything on it. You stay here and keep it company while I find a firm. All right, you lot. You've cleared the site. Off you go to the safety barrier. Parker, you can start unloading equipment. Uh, Lieutenant Colby, sir. I can't identify the fuse, but it looks no different than the 50. But it could be a new type. It's marked uh, AGC-75. And I was wondering if we had anything on it. Uh, It must be new. Well, I warned you it might be tricky. All I can suggest is you go through every drill you know, and a bit extra. It's trickier than you think, sir. The bomb will have to be turned a few inches. And it's resting on a wooden floor that feels as though it's going to collapse at any moment. Is there a basement? Yes. Yes, there is, sir. The bomb came down through three floors and brought part of a wall with it. And then part of the ground floor near to the bomb collapsed. And it looks to me as though the basement is partly filled with debris. I see. Well, Colby, all I can ask is that you do your best. Oh, uh, yes, and if you are lucky enough to withdraw the fuse, hand it over to end section. The boffins will want to look it over. Good luck. 
I'm going to need much more than good luck. Is everything all right, Sergeant? Uh, yes, sir. Well, it seems I'm on my own with this one. It's a new type. Okay, we'll need two of the men to help turn it. And remember that they must go easy. We don't want the floor to fall away from under our feet. Uh, Sergeant, are you listening? I, oh, yes, sir. Well, get on with it, then. Uh, before I do, sir, there's uh, something you'd better know. Well, get on with it, man. I just had a few words with a police officer, and uh, he told me that three of the nurses are missing. Missing? How could they go missing if they were in the shelter? Well, they weren't, sir. They didn't go into the shelter. What? And what's more, one is uh, your young lady, sir. Oh, no. Helen? Are you... are you sure of that, Sergeant? Positive, sir. The names I got were Helen Gorringe, Susan Porter, and Heather Watson. Oh, tell me the whole... I mean, th th they might have been out. I mean, No, we sir, no. They were last seen playing cards in the recreation room as the siren went. It's a big building. Where is the recreation room? We're uh, standing in the middle of it, sir. I can't understand it. Three girls don't just disappear into thin air for no reason. The bomb didn't explode. It caused a lot of damage, though, sir. Yes. Uh, look, uh... Call two men to help shift the bomb. Right. Duggan, Marshal, get your muscles over here. On the double. Right. Right. Now listen carefully. I want you men to understand that this bomb has an unknown type of fuse. So it has to be turned very gently. Right, right sir. The slightest jolt could activate the fuse mechanism. <clears throat> All right. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Marshal... You there. Got it, sir. Duggan, over there. And you, Sergeant, here by me. Oh, that's it. <clears throat> okay. Now, gently turn it. <coughs> Ready? A bit more. All right. Here. Watch right. your fingers, Duggan. All right, sir. Easy. Easy. There you go. Right. Right. Okay, that's got it. Right, sir. The, the floor, sir. Keep still. Absolutely still. Stay here a moment, Sergeant. You two men, back to the safety barrier. But go easy. Sir? Oh, I thought the floor was going under us then, sir. Yes. Quiet a moment while I listen for a clock mechanism. Yes. Damn it all, it has got something like that. There's a definite tick coming from the fuse. I'll rig up the magnetic clock stopper, sir. Wait and keep still while I check it again. Yes. Yes, there's no doubt about it. Well, you'd better do the necessary, Sergeant. And while you're about... Excuse me, make... interrupting, sir, but I heard something else. Huh? What? Very faint it was, sir. A voice. It seemed to be shouting from far off. Out in the road, perhaps? No, 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 sir. You'd better listen. It was coming from right under our feet, sir. Haggerty, help Morgan lift that pillar. Right, sir. We can't risk it being dropped. Here's Major Ellington, sir. What's going on here, Garvey? I don't know whether you've heard, sir, but three of the nurses are missing. Oh. We've heard voices from below. They must be trapped down in the basement. What a situation. Are you sure? I'm positive, sir. I've got the men to clear away debris over there, away from the bomb. Yeah. According to the building plans, we might be able to reach them from there. Well, I hope so. What about the bomb? I see you've got a clock stopper at that. Yes, it was ticking, sir. Oh, yes. I've never seen a fuse like this. It's dicey, very dicey. What have you got in mind? Well, break through to the survivors first, sir, and then deal with the bomb when they're clear. Yep, you've got your priorities right. All right, carry on. I have to go and see Hawkins. He's disarming a bomb at the fire station. There's a steel girder blocking the way, sir. You can't shift it? Not without a crane. Damn. We couldn't get a crane close enough without risking the whole lot going down into the basement. Well, that just about sums it up, sir. It's a puzzle. 
Unless we burrow directly down close to the bomb. But again, the risk is... Well, the risk is horrendous. I think the lads will be willing to have a go if it means getting the girls out. <sighs> if it was a conventional fuse, I'd risk taking it out first. All right, Sergeant, bring the lads over and see what they can do. There. I can hear Debris being moved. They must have heard us shouting. Oh, it won't be long, Heather. How is your leg feeling now? Oh, broken and painful. Oh, there's nothing we can do but wait. It's almost as though the roof's caving in by the sound of it. There'll be a lot of weight on it, most likely. Debris, they'll have to clear it away first. I wonder what it was that hit us. I don't think it was a bomb. Yes, it was hot. There was no explosion. It, it, it could have been a shot down German plane. We wouldn't be alive now if it had been a bomb. But I've heard that when a bomber crashes, all the bombs it's carrying explode at once. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps it had already dropped its bombs and was heading back from the channel. Oh, oh this leg. Oh, Even a couple of aspirins would go down well right now. It's impossible for us to see in this dark. <laughs> Heather, are you, are you lying comfortably? Oh, I wouldn't feel comfortable lying on a ton of goose feathers, let alone a cold stone floor. Hello! <gasps> Oh, thank heaven. Yes, oh, we yes. can hear you. Who's down there? Sue, Helen, and Heather. Any injuries? Heather has a broken leg, and we're all a bit bruised and shaken. Tell Helen that this is Paul. Oh, Helen. Oh, I'm all right, Paul. How long will you take to get to us? Maybe an hour. Perhaps a little more. It's a delicate operation. Just stay tight while we get on with it. Oh, well, at least we know for certain something's being done. Oh, I feel better now I've spoken to Paul. I wonder what he meant by a delicate operation. Surely all they have to do is move the debris and lift us out. And I wonder why Paul is involved. I mean, his job is to defuse unexploded bombs. Well, that's it then, isn't it? We must have been hit by a bomb that didn't explode. Oh. And your Paul is trying to defuse it. You mean that... Well, I... it means and explains what he meant by a delicate operation. Heather must be right. We're sitting right beneath an unexploded bomb. Sergeant, I think we can make a start on the floorboards now. All of us, sir. Uh, myself, you, and two others. This floor is still very unsafe. Sir. Duggan, Harrison, you stay here. Right. The rest of you buzz off back to the safety barrier. Go on there. All we have to do, I think, is lever up a few floorboards and drop down a rope. One of the wardens brought me a window cleaner's ladder, sir. Oh. We can have it down through the aisle and the girl's out in a jiffy. Good man. I was going to suggest that we... Uh, oh. Careful, sir. The floor's beginning to go. It's the weight of the bomb. Some of the supports under the floor must be split. All right. We'll have to make a start from here where there's not so much sag. Yes, sir. Duggan, you work with me. Right. We'll leave it together and then we'll... Oh. That's a ruddy bomb gone off, sir. Some poor blight has probably had it. Yeah, about a mile off, I'd say. Could be the one at the power station. Uh, Lieutenant Harris was assigned that one. The Major was going there when he left. All right. Well, let's get on with it. Well, that's it. <laughs> Heave! Good. But that wasn't so difficult. Sergeant, the power's gone off. Okay, stay back there. Oh, must have been the power station that got it. Sir. Hold it a second, Sergeant. Can you hear me down below? Yes, Paul. Can you see anything? No, nothing at all. Well, I can hear you fairly well now, so shut when you can see daylight. We have to break through the basement ceiling. So you'd better get into a corner where you don't get hurt by falling debris. There's an unexploded bomb, isn't there? Well, uh, yes, there is, but it's nothing for you to worry about. You just keep your fingers crossed, and we'll be through to you in no time at all. So I know. Seems like it. Must have put two and two together. Anyway, let's get some more boards up. Lieutenant, I've just thought of something. If the power's off, then the clock stopper won't function. 
heaven, you're right. I'd better check it. You carry on. We're in a fix now. The blasted thing could go off any second. Look, maybe I could organize some kind of an emergency power supply to operate the clock stoppers. Uh, I don't think there's enough time. Well, begging your pardon, sir, but it won't take longer than it's going to take to get the girls up from the basement. There's another alternative, Sergeant. I'm going to try to defuse it. Oh, don't forget it's a new type, sir. You don't have to remind me. I'd better give it a bash, all the same. You and the men had better get yourselves back behind the safety valve. If you don't mind, sir, I uh, want to stay just in case you need an extra hand. You do know the risk? No more than yours, sir. You two report back to Corporal Hodges. Right. Let me see. Is everything I need? <laughs> That's another rafter gone. And the bomb shifted a bit. Yeah. I can still get at the fuse now. Steady out. Right. Now let me get the locking ring off. It's as tight as a Scotsman's purse fastener. Here it comes. Slowly. Slowly. Yes. That's the first part done. Here's the extractor, sir. Thanks. Now, if there's a booby, this is where we're going to find it. The barrel's also tight. That's unusual. Come on. Come on. Behave yourself. Blast, it won't come. You see those two indentations on the edge, sir? Yeah? It might mean that it unscrews up. Yes. Yes, you could be right, Sergeant. Uh, the locking ring tool should fit. Yes, this is a perfect fit. Uh, that blighter won't turn. No, no. All I'll do is break the tool. Now, wait a minute. Perhaps it turns the opposite way. Yes, of course. It must turn the opposite way to the locking ring. Yes. That's still tight, but... Yes... Yes, it's coming. Now, look, I'm not going to withdraw it completely. Not yet. First, let me study it for a possible booby. You mean like the uh, one with spring-loaded pins that detonate when the fuse is withdrawn? Yeah, something like that. There could be a wire under the barrel which... <laughs> the floor's sagging water. It's our combined weight. You've been a great help, Sergeant, but I think now you'd better go back a bit. Over by that wall will do. Uh, yes, sir. Here's the Major, sir. Oh, damn. All I need is to have him watching over my shoulder. You get the noses out, Colby? Careful of the floor, sir. Right. It's badly sagging and won't take much more strain. OK, I'll stand over here, then. The nurses are still below us, sir. But I doubt if we can get them out before the bomb explodes. No. I thought it better if I tried to get the fuse out first. And what's more... I think the floor's about to give way, and there's no power to operate the clock stopper. Well, you've got a problem there. I'm afraid the bomb at the power station went off. Harris was killed, poor chap. It was a Type 50, so I don't know what went wrong. Look, I've brought this radio transmitter for you. I'll be at the safety barrier listening in. Right, sir. We need the maximum amount of information about this new type you're working on. Uh, Sergeant, pass this Lieutenant Corby, would you? Very good, sir. Here. Yeah. Can you reach, sir? Uh, right. Uh, oh, I've got it. Know how to use it, Colby? Yes, it was part of my training, sir. Good. All right, how far have you gone? Well, the locking ring came off after a bit of a struggle, but I found that the barrel has to be unscrewed clockwise. Clockwise? Well, that's a new innovation for a start. Yes. I was just studying it for boobies when you arrived, sir. All right, I'm going to leave you to it. You'd better come back to the safety point with me, Sergeant. If you don't mind, sir, I'd rather stay. Regulation, Sergeant, come on. Sir. Give us a few moments before you start, Corby. Well, I've turned the fuse barrel as far to the right as it'll go. It seems to be lifting easily. I'm pulling it out slowly. And... There seems to be some... Slight resistance. Easy now, Colby. There could be one or more spring pins. I'm still withdrawing it. 
Yes. Yes, I can see a small ridge. Uh, no, no, there's two. One on each side of the barrel. Possibly the spring pins. I'm about to apply a pressure band. I'm slipping it over the top of the barrel now and... Oh! The, the floor! It's giving way! The bottom's slipping away from me! Yes. Yes, I'm all right. It's it's the floor and the bomb. What happened? Half of the floor has crashed down into the basement, and the bomb's hanging over the edge, ready to fall in. Paul! Paul, we can see right through now. Are you all right? Yes. Yes, and now there's a hole big enough to get them out. But we'll have to hurry. That bomb's going to drop down as sure as eggs are eggs. Look, I'm sending Sergeant Wright to you with a ladder. What about the bomb itself? I can... I can still reach the fuse. But I feel we should get the nurses out first, sir. All right, I agree, Colby. Priority is to save lives. Helen, the sergeant will drop a ladder down to you in a moment. Get up and away from here as quickly as you can. Heather can't climb a ladder, but... Between Sue and I, we can, we can just manage to push her up. Good. Sergeant Wright will be able to carry her once she's up. Uh, here he is now. I get ready. All right, Sergeant. Lower the ladder from the far side of the hole from me. Yes, how about there? I can see them, sir. Uh, uh, okay, girls. Up you come. Where, where's Paul? I'm up here, hanging under the bomb for dear life. Now hurry, will you? When the floor gave way and the bomb rolled, I dropped the pressure band. What? So I'll have to try and hold the pins in with my fingers. Well, that could be dangerous. The slightest jolt and you're gone. Listen, hold everything till I get there to give you a hand. No, sir. I, I can manage. You sure? The fuse is almost clear. Yes. There are two wide pins. I, I've got hold of them. The fuse is coming out smoothly. Careful. There. There. The confounded thing is clear. Now don't let go of those pins for heaven's sake or the detonator will explode in your hand. I'm bringing a pressure band over to you. You better be quick, sir. The weight of the bomb is too much for the floor. Call me. <coughs> Call me. You all right? Uh, just badly shaken up, sir. The floor dropped away from under me. Luckily, the bomb fell first. Now, what about the fuse? I have a strong sense of self-preservation, sir. I'm still holding on to it. Good man. Now, well, we don't want to ruin it before the boffins have had a look at it, do we? Let's see. Yeah, that's it, eh? All right, keep still while I slip this pressure band over it. <coughs> there you go. Now, it's as safe as high as it. Oh, doesn't look much different than the 50s. Well done, Colby. Thank you, sir. I'll tell you what. I'll handle the rest of this. You cut away to the safety point and dry that young lady's eyes. She's crying, you know. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.